Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Rohit. Today we will talk about a new topic called Open API and Swagger. So what is Open API? An Open API, also called a Public API, is an application programming interface made publicly available to software developers. Open API are published on the internet and shared freely, allowing to the owner of a network accessible service to give an universal access to the consumer. So if you think about the open API, last few days we started talking about the weather API. By the weather API, we are getting the weather details. From the IP address trace, we are able to see that uh, in which country that IP belongs. Those are the public open API. So open API, nothing but uh, the API that um, help publicly available and help you to get the information. So those are the open API. So what is the version running now in the Open API? Right now, Open API specification running 3.1.0 version. So next question is the what is the Swagger? The Swagger is the interface description language for describing RESTful API expressed using JSON. Swagger is used together with a set of open source software tools to design, build, document, and the RESTful web services. Okay, so if you think about or if you see my last video, we talk about the Swagger. Swagger is actually help you to build your documentation and it's help you to uh, to create a new document for the API. So nowadays, every day we are building so many APIs, but um, uh, uh, we don't know that how to use those API to get the, uh, to complete your, our documentation, we can use the Swagger. Which format use Open API and Swagger? So Swagger and Open API basically use the YAML file and the JSON file. What is the Stoplight? Stoplight is a services or application that help you to basically build a Open API documentation. We'll understand later. So example YAML code. I uh, will talk about this later. But if you see the Open API is uh, colon 3.0.1. This is the version. It have a details and here how it looks like the yaml file we'll discuss that and we'll uh, um, understand that how that stoplight works using the simple example okay so let's get started So if you see in last um, topic we talked about that Zoom uh, application and in the Zoom application I show you that how we can create a meeting, how we can send a meeting invite to the user. So this is called documentation. If you see this is the Zoom API documentation. So I, I, I cannot reach back to the Zoom um, um, services be, until unless I am using this Zoom as a commercial purpose, right? So let's take an example. I'm not using the commercial person for, uh, purpose for the Zoom, or maybe I am using any public API, for example, weather API. I don't have a point of contact to reach back to them, right? Or the, how to use their API. For that, they have published their own documents, and we go through the document and we try to implement in our um, application, right? So basically, if you see here, how we can uh, get the, uh, uh, how we can get that, um, set up the authentication, and then if I go back to the meetings, how we can get the list of meetings. So this will be the endpoint, this will be the response, how the response will be looks like. If in the documentation, it's clearly mentioned that how to use all these API details, right? So that are the, that the documentation, API documentation, whenever you're building an API, so you should, there should be one person who are actually building the doc, uh, API and the second person will be whoever is, will, will do the documentation and the third person will test that API. So three, three team will be uh, involved in a API building. First person developer, first team is the developer, second team is the uh, tester and the third team is the API de documentation developers. So who will design their API, how it will be used. So this is basically, if you see, the API documentation. So this type of documentation you can done for your own application. We'll talk about that today. To build the documentation, um, I can use the Swagger, but just in the Swagger, there is a limitation that uh, you cannot, uh, um, you need to be write the code to uh, to understand or to build the, your API. But in this top line, you don't need to write any code. You can build the complete API by yourself by simply uh, click some of the uh, button and then you can design that. Okay, so let's do that. So think about that. This is my uh, service now um, uh, document uh, API. 
So whenever we hit that document, whenever we hit this API, it will return some responses and sometimes it is 200, sometimes it's uh, 201. So and this is the get method and second is the post method. I'll do in a simple example, the rest you can implement in your actual scenario. So in the stoplight, if you go back to the stoplight, you can see the options called plus. You will click that plus. You need to have the select the project type. Our case, we are designing the API. Design API means that we are documenting that API. We'll select that. We'll click continue. Now here, we need to provide the project name. So and you have to define the type called public or the private or internal. So our case, it depends on that. I'll select the public and here, the project name I'll select the service now documentation and click create options. Once you click that, you have your options called import file if the documentation already done in a different environment because it said it will generate a YAML file or the like, uh, JSON file. So we can transfer our data from one environment to the another environment, one platform to the another platform. So we can do that. So we will uh, we'll, we'll just simply click the, we'll, we don't have, so we'll do one thing, we'll click the APIs. And then we will put the APIs name and here you need to do, select the version, that which version you are need that um, APIs. So whenever you are creating a new open APIs, you will have these options. You can, as I mentioned in the document, you can build in a JSON format or YAML format. So I'll select the YAML format. Right now we are running the 3.1. This is the latest version. So we'll put that service now APIs. Okay. And then we'll click that create. Even if you have the existing YAML file function, you can directly import and then start modifying that. So we'll click the create button. So simply it will create a, a, a graphical interface. And if you see here, if you click the code, you can see the way I show you in the document, um, it's generate that way. If I scroll up, this is the open API version info uh, version. All these are automatically defined. But here is the example. Uh, here the uh, extra benefit is that you don't need to see the code. You can directly click the form and then you can click uh, preview. So you can see that how your um, uh, documentation will be looks like that. You can define, you can see that. So in the top, it is saying the ServiceNow um, API. Here we'll put that uh, summary, that ServiceNow. So whatever is makes sense, uh, this is because basically documentation. So whatever is makes sense, you can put the summary and then description. Now here is your server name. So in your case, my server name, if you go back to the documentation, my server name or the base URL, the way we call say the base URL, this is my base URL. We'll copy this base URL and paste here. Okay. So now live server name is changed. Now what we'll see the security schema. What is the security schema? Security schema is that how you can interact these, uh, uh, these um, APIs by OAuth or maybe basic authentication. So what, what will be your schema? So our case, it's not a API key. It will be the um, HTTP and then the type will be basic. So we'll put that name equal to basic uh -huh, auth, something like that. Okay. Now, if you see it's building that it's automatically building, if you see here, so once you select that it's may, it is saying that security is the basic authentication is a simple authentication schema, uh, it should be protocol and it's combination of the uh, username and password and then how it, that's how it looks like that. Okay. Here is the global security. Uh, if you want to add the global security, you can add. Uh, so we'll select global security is the basic auth. So whatever we built here, it will be the basic auth. Now here the contact. So to whom we should be reach back if in case of any um, any de developer need any help. So we should provide that name here. So Rohit uh, contact URL in something called snowexpert.com. Uh, here we need to uh, provide that uh, email address. So let's take example. We'll put that email address called 
my email address and terms and services if you want to put that um, you can provide that so that's how your documentation is automatically built it up if you see here now we'll go back so if you see in this uh, zoom uh, last time i show you that uh, the similar way it is building your documentation so this is my first setup now next what we have to do we have to see if you this is the paths okay so in these paths our case we have a two paths one is the we are creating we are getting the incident another we are creating the incident maybe right so we'll define this path so in this path what we'll do we'll right click uh, me this is the path they have already defined you can right click and delete this path so this path will be automatically generated so you can uh, simply uh, delete this path and then we'll create a new path our case a new path is the now we'll paste this path our path and in this case this is not the incident this will be dynamic so we'll put this in a uh, braces here now if you see here this path is created and by default this path is created and here what we can see we can change this path name so what we'll do we'll put that get uh, table record so this will be your path name and here uh, the the incident is the path para okay this is the dynamic name we have to be past that and here uh, we have to put some desk if you want to uh, put some description you can put that so you can say that uh, so that way uh, this this is the post method and this way you can get this information okay and here uh, we have very first thing is the incident is our path parameter which is required okay now we also have a query parameters so we'll click query parameter and here what is our query parameter query parameter is a sys param query and uh, we have to pass this query here so we'll put this uh, sys param query and this sys param query is required so we'll click here so this is the required and here we have to put the description so let's put that we'll put the description now security we'll simply click that and then add security options and then we have created the basic auth first so that will be our security okay so that's it uh, for your uh, query parameter and if you see the documentation in this case it is saying the get table record this is the request and this is the basic authentication uh, path parameter is the incident which is required and then query parameter is the uh, also required and here the description is for giving now coming back to the response how the response will be looks like that you can also define that we'll click that and this will be response and then uh, it will be uh, we can define the body how the response body will be look, look like that so our case this example will put the um, the how the response body will be looks like that so let's put that so basically i am in the rest api explorer and if you see here once we successfully hit to the server we'll get this kind of response now this is our example response body we'll copy and paste here called response body and then uh, here we'll change this name to all uh, um, incident details something like your documentation is prepared for first uh, first one now if i go back to the tried options so you can see uh, it is showing that you can directly say you can directly hit to that server uh, and then you can try that how you are getting the response so first is the authentication it is asking for us awesome so here here you can click the send api uh, request and it will give you the response so your documentation is uh, pretty much done you can create one more new api i'll click the new path here so we'll click here new path and here i need to be provide the new path this case is that uh we have to copy this one and here we don't this will be another path so we'll paste here new path and this is the paste here and here we'll change that to table name and hit enter okay now you can see i am getting an error 
because in this path already exists so i'll click here this path and in this path we'll click the post method and in this post we'll click the post operation because their path is pretty much same only the uh, uh, you know that request body is changes so we'll put that this will be our description so in this case our description will be uh, put table name and here uh, we have to select the description so now here uh, in the security we'll select that add security operation then that is the basic and then here what will be the, our body will define that how our body will be looks like that so this will be our body so we'll copy and then paste that this is our body sample body so we'll copy here and then paste here you can see the how the body will be looks like that it is defined now if you click the try it you can see here you need to define the body so you can define the body so that way you can uh, you can build your own api now what you can do you can click the publish button here so this api will be published and then uh, if you want to invite any of this user you can invite so i'll put uh, myself another invite and i'll see that okay also you can click the share button and then here you can see this i give you that editor option so i'll change that and i'll give the role equal to viewer so he can only see that how the uh, the api looks like now go back to the code you can see your complete api code is created for you uh, so this is the api yaml code is created for you you can use this yaml code to any other platform this is the open source plus so you can use this code any other platform to uh, you know build this api but here the only advantage is that it is automatically you are clicking the form and it is automatically building the code for you you don't need to write your own uh, code so you can copy this code to copy and paste to your swagger but remember that you have to check that right now i guess swagger is um, um operating uh, point 3.0.0 so whenever you create the project make sure if you uh, create the apis it should be 3.0 version then only the swagger will be support okay so both the version support should i mean both the platform their um version should be same then only you can use that swagger this yaml file okay I'll quickly show you that in the different window that how this complete document will be looks like that. Now, if you see, I am in right now incognito mode. And if you see here, um, uh, if I go back to this uh, projects and view docs, this link I will share. So this link I will share with my external stakeholders so that they can see that how the API will be looks like that. And this API is completely documented properly. So this will be our server and uh, maybe this is my mock server will change that so here this will be our basic authentication and here to get the table we have uh, we are going to use this one as a authentication and this will be our table name uh, and this will be how you can try it your response body will be looks like that so that's how your response body will be looks like okay so you get a response okay and your response example will be this is your example for post, uh, you have to be passed that board, uh, table name and then body and then uh, we don't define actually we, pa we need you need to pass this body like that and then that how you can send the data. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you guys like my video and if you get any value, please like, share and subscribe with your community. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a great day.